Hello and welcome to Graphic Online News in Brief. In the headlines, Ketu South residents protest continued closure of Aflao Togo border. Nomadic headsmen accused of gang raping and injuring a 13 year old girl at Gumwa Adjuntem in the central region. Director General of State Interest and Governance Authority says partisan politics is denying Ghana her full development potential. And fire guards portions of Agbobulushi Yam Market. News in Brief is brought to you by. Download your Graphic News Plus now and choose your preferred package daily, weekly, monthly, and annually and access free news on various interest areas as well. Graphic News Plus, connecting people through news. And now the News in Brief. A number of indigents of Ketu South Municipality in the Volta region on Friday head to the street to protest the continuous closure of the land border between Ghana and Togo. They say the reopening of the border is long overdue as it is affecting their livelihoods. The border was closed by President Ekufuado a year and a half ago as part of measures to help curb the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, the residents clad in red and black attires and hoisting placards poured on the streets of Aplau on Friday, August 27, saying they have suffered enough. Some of the inscriptions on their placards read, Border closure collapsed our businesses. Hunger is more deadly and husbands are suffering. Open the border. MP for Ketu South, Ablaji Fagomashi, participated in the demonstration. A 13-year-old girl is reported to have been gang-raped by four nomadic headsmen at Gomwa Adjentem in the central region after the headsmen attacked her home. The young girl also suffered gunshot wounds. The father of the 13-year-old girl who was with his daughter at the time of the attack also suffered cutlass wounds and is on admission at the Winneba Trauma and Specialist Hospital. The incident has sparked anger among some youth of the area who have threatened to hunt down the herdsmen. The chief of Gumwa Azentem, Nano Brimpon Isel Ando, confirming the incident says the father informed him about the attack, adding that the police have been notified of the incident. The Fulani Hesman issue is more alarming. Uh, a day before yesterday night, I had a call from one of the tenants on my land confirming the presence of, uh, he said, uh, uh, what? Uh, armed robbers. They came to attack a certain boy, namely um, Rasta and his daughter. They shot him and the child. They took the daughter under 13 years. They lay her ambush and raped her. The Director General of the State Interest and Governance Authority, SIGA, Mr. Stephen Asama Boatin, has bemoaned the polarized political environment in Ghana that endangers the appointment of friends and associates of ruling authorities to manage state institutions. He said unhelpful practice has denied the country of harnessing the full potential of its citizens for national development. In a goodwill message, the Institute of Directors Ghana, during a virtual induction ceremony on Thursday, August 26th, Mr. Samoa Boateng said, the polarized situation has ensured that Ghana operates at half capacity. He likened it to the aeroplanes with dual turbo engines but which when they take off needlessly shut off one engine and struggle with the other for the duration of the journey. I like in uh, the Ghanaian environment, especially the, the polarized Ghanaian political environment, uh, to a situation of uh, an airplane that takes off from an airport with two turbo engines and then it starts to climb up, then one engine is shut off. Um, and then the, the, the plane has to just go on one engine alone. And uh, what's the other engine shutting down for? Uh, so we're not using our full capacity, potential capacity. That's what it is. Uh, uh, an MPP government comes in, it shuts the NDC down. NDC comes in, it shuts the MPP down. In our last story, scores of wooden structures at the Kokumba Yam Market at Agbobloshi in the Greater Accra region have been raised by fire on Thursday evening. Unconfirmed eyewitness accounts indicate that the fire was as a result of an electrical fault from one of the wooden structures. The fire is reported to have started around 12 midnight, destroying properties including drums of alcohol and palm oil, two bags of yam and personal belongings. 
Eyewitnesses say it took the intervention of personnel of the Ghana National Fire Service to put out the fire at about 2 a.m. on Friday morning. When graphic online got to the slum community at about 7 a.m. Friday morning, affected residents were still at the scene counting their losses. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again with another edition. Stay safe and protect yourself from COVID-19. For more news, visit graphic.com.gh or log on to Facebook at Daily Graphic and on YouTube at Graphic GH. I am Juliet Echa Safo. Subscribe now.